The NBA Draft is coming into clearer focus. I have a new big board up on OrlandoMagicDaily.com. So it's time to rethink a little bit about the Magic's goals on draft night. We'll do that, dive into Taylor Hendricks, and sorting through what I, who I think is important, who to watch as we get closer and closer to the NBA Draft. It's time for a Friday edition of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is June 9th, 2023. My name is Philip Rossenreich. I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow me there on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Magic's goals for the draft. Maybe how they've evolved a little bit as we've taken a look at the free agency classes, as we've taken a look uh, at this draft class and where the Magic sit. Plus, a look at Taylor Hendricks and sorting through other players on the Magic's big board. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember this great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA. And when you enter promo code LockedOnNBA, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every order. Check it out today. The, the, the draft is a really important time. It's for, for, for every team. It's really not just the teams at the top. For every team, it is a chance to project into the future. It is a chance to make a long-term investment. And certainly some teams maybe aren't as focused on their long-term health because they're in the middle of championship fights or they're, they need that last little piece to get to get to the title. And a first round pick is just a tool to, to, to get that, to use that. But ostensibly, if you are drafting a player, and I tell people this all the time, especially when Magic rookies struggle, you don't draft a player for his rookie season. As great as Paolo Bancaro's rookie season was, we aren't drafting him just for last year. We want to see what he's going to become in four or five years. You are drafting players with the hopes that they develop into something five years down the road. And so we've talked plenty, and I think the Magic are squarely in the middle of this battle. We've talked plenty about this tension, this, this push and pull between finding a player who fits this roster and trying to grab more talent, just get talented players in and develop them into the players that will fit this roster moving forward. Certainly having a player like Paolo Bencaro, having a player like Franz Wagner, even having young guys like Wendell Carter and Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony and, and, and even Jalen Suggs, that does clarify what you're willing to stomach or, or, or clarify what pathways you want to go. Uh, it, 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 there is a certain clarity to how the Magic are, are, are playing and, and, and working right now uh, because those guys are in place. And the Magic do have to balance a little bit more of what fits this roster. As Jeff Weltman always says, you draft a player, you draft a young player, but you want to make sure that there is that pathway for them to succeed, that pathway for them to develop, that pathway for them to play. I've sat here pretty much since the beginning of this draft process. As we begin, we began starting to cover the draft, I've sat here and pretty much said, the Magic have to, and that is have to, grab a shooter on draft night. I, I, I didn't care if it's by trade. I didn't care. I don't care if it's by, um, if it's by uh, 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 a draft pick. I feel very passionate that the Magic do need to get a shooter in this draft, that that is a need the Magic have to start addressing and make clear they want to address on draft night. Now, free agency also plays a role in this. If the Magic do have to plan on throwing some money at Gary Trent Jr., 
that shooting need becomes a little bit less. But as Jeff Weltman also says, you got to take what the draft gives you. And if there aren't shooters in the draft, if there aren't shooters at the top of your board, then what do you do? There are plenty of rumors going out in the universe. There's a rumor right now that the Magic are interested in moving up, that they have an interest in Amen Thompson, um, that there's all these things. And, and obviously, I, I think some of it is the Magic have the 6th and 11th pick. When you have two lottery picks, everyone's going to use you as leverage. If there's another deal you're working on, you might say, hey, we've been talking with the Magic and you know they're interested. I I am still fairly skeptical because I think the Magic are going to get someone that they like at six. Um, among the top six guys, they'll get Asar Thompson or Cam Whitmore. And, and I think, you know, I, I have my skeptic. I have my skepticism of Cam Whitmore, and certainly there are reasons to be a, be a little bit skeptical of Asar Thompson as well. But it, those are two very very talented players that would help this team. And I think that you do take you do take a long look at them. Honestly, if you ask me, I think that I think there are better odds that the Magic trade down from six to like eight, nine, ten to take Taylor Hendricks than there are that they they trade up from six to take Amen Thompson. But there is there is some philosophy in there to say why not trade up? Why not just throw these two assets into the middle? And get that last bite at the apple. Essentially, the logic is this is going to be the last time the Magic are picking this high in the draft. Or you hope this is the last time the Magic are picking this high in the draft. So why not maximize it? You don't need two more rookies. You don't need two more young players. You'll probably use the 36 pick on someone. Uh, but you don't need these young players, especially if you're planning a big free agency. And so... You can get one last bite at the apple of a very talented player. And again, I'm a big believer in this. If the Magic believe Amen Thompson is their point guard of the future or fits so much of what they want to do, do what you got to do to get him. I'm a big believer in that. If that is your guy, go get him. You're not drafting from a pick. You're drafting for a player. Go get your player. Now, obviously, you're not going to get Victor Wembanyama, but you, you get what I'm saying here, I hope. Within reason, obviously, within a fair deal, go get your guy. And so, I'm not here to say it's impossible that the Magic do make a trade-up. But I do also think that it fits into one of these goals. So, it's in the rundown over here. I asked the question... What are the Magic's goals in this draft? What are they trying to accomplish in two weeks? What are they hoping to get out in two weeks? How does that set up their free agency? You know, free agency, we, we can't put free agency and the draft in two separate buckets. They really are one thing. If the Magic are going to chase after veteran shooters, maybe they don't need to get a shooter in the draft. Maybe they shore up their depth. Maybe they add some talent. You know, maybe they want more size at point guard. And so they will grab an Amen Thompson or an Anthony Black. Maybe they want shooting and they make sure they get Grady Dick or Jordan Hawkins at, at 11. Maybe they want some forward depth. So they go after Taylor Hendricks or they make sure they get Taylor Hendricks. or they try to put the position themselves to maximize their asset and come away with Hendricks. Maybe they're looking to get that backup center and fill that specific need. And they draft the Derek Lively. Maybe they are really looking for one last bite at the apple. And they just go talent over everything and figure they will make it work when he gets here. What are the Magic's goals for draft night? The Magic obviously aren't telling anybody. They're the Magic. They don't talk to anybody. They don't, they don't let anybody know what they're doing. So again, I see all these rumors about, and I'm personally skeptical that, that they're really about the magic, probably really about something else. Then again, we will see what happens on draft night as we always do. But that gets back to the central question. It's the central tension that we've been talking about and debating and thinking about and, and pondering because I'm, I'm, I'm by myself, so I'm not debating anyone. But 
um, the central tension that we've been pondering about and trying to figure out what the Magic are going to do with. Are the Magic going to go for fit? Are they looking to fill positional needs? Or is this really about adding talent, top-end talent, one last time? We got two weeks to continue pondering this before we finally get an answer, and then all will become clear very, very quickly. I mentioned him a bit in that segment, a player that I think ha- brings a lot of interest, certainly fills a lot of needs for the Orlando Magic. We'll talk about Taylor Hendricks coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our friends over at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are great pants. Just, just let, let me just say that plain and simple. You're looking for pants that are comfortable, that are breathable, especially here in Florida, um, that are going to look good no matter where you're at, whether you're at the beach, whether you're out on the golf course, whether you're at work. Bird Dogs is the perfect draft pick because they bring you versatility. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. They do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better and honestly look much nicer. They'll think that you're actually wearing good pants. They are good pants, but nice pants. You know what I'm saying? They fit way better than regular shorts and are made of a stiff, restricting, that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. They're not made of that. Bird Dogs fish the issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. And that's big here in Florida. I went to the parks yesterday in jeans. That was a mistake. Bird Dogs use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. If you're living in Florida and you're not wearing Bird Dogs, like I, I think you're probably doing something wrong. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA and enter promo code locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. So as we've talked about this NBA draft and, and, and talked about several players, um, it's We've talked about the big names, kind of the big stars, um, and, and and the shooters. Um, you know, you know, those are obviously kind of the two areas that this, that last segment we really talked about. The Magic needs shooting. That's that's been my kind of big goal for the Magic on draft night. So Jordan Hawkins and Grady Dick were really high up on our list of guys that we needed to talk about. The Magic might want one more bite at the apple. So we talked about Almond Thompson. We talked about Osar Thompson. We talked a little bit about Cam Whitmore. I don't know if we d- dive deep into Cam Whitmore, so maybe that episode's coming. Um, we talked about those guys. But there is kind of a third path, uh, so to speak. You know, the Magic are set on stars. They they may not really need to get a star. You know, as good as one more bite at the apple might be, they don't really need a ball-dominant player right now. Or if they're willing to invest in Markel Fultz and see what he could do, they got Paolo, they got Franz, Wendell needs to get his shots. Like, there are a lot of mouths to feed. And so maybe another high-usage, high-volume player isn't what this team needs. Maybe a shooter isn't what this team needs in the draft with all the shooters available in the draft and and free agency between Austin Reeves, between Gary Trent Jr., possibly even like a Lonnie Walker. There There are options. There are multiple options. There are multiple ways for the Magic to accomplish the things they need to accomplish. And so then what is that middle path? What is that secondary path for this Magic team to get something of quality out of the draft? That middle path is a guy like Taylor Hendricks. You can put him in a category with, say, an Anthony Black or a Kaysen Wallace. Taylor Hendricks, to me, is the best of that bunch because his skills are pretty well-defined. He's pretty good already at the things he's going to be good at at the NBA. And if he doesn't turn into something more, he's going to be fine still. Taylor Hendricks represents a higher floor, perhaps a lower ceiling player in this draft. And that's not meant as an insult. Taylor Hendricks is a guy that's going to come in and be able to contribute fairly quickly 
as he learns, and, and there will be growing pains as there always are. And not only that, he's a guy that fits a need for the Magic. The Magic need a rim protector. They need a shot blocker. They need a guy that's going to help Mo Wagner out if he plays back. They need a guy that's going to help Wendell Carter out and be able to switch and be big and block shots. That's Taylor Hendricks. Hendricks is a fantastic athlete. He runs the, runs the floor really well in transition, where I think he'll score a lot of his points in, in the NBA. But what he does really well is his versatility. We know how much the Magic love versatility, seven-foot wingspan. Um, we know how much the Magic love versatility. He can get out on the perimeter and guard guys on the, on the perimeter. He can guard guys in the post. He can come over from the weak side and block shots. He averaged almost two blocks per game at UCF last year. Hendricks has a lot, you know, Hendricks may not be the best player in this draft, but he has a lot of skills that fit what the Magic need because he also shot 38% from beyond the arc. Hendricks last year was the Knights leader in points, rebounds, blocks, minutes, and PR and field goal percentage. Measured at six foot nine with a seven foot 0.25 wingspan at the NBA Draft Combine, he has a lot of the skills that this man that this Magic team desperately needs. They're not looking necessarily for a score, but he can step out to, to at least 18 feet and comfortably shoot, if not out to the NBA three point line, and that might take a little bit of development, but he'll get there. He can attack straight line and finish at the rim. He can block shots. He can defend the paint. These are things the Magic need. And, and while the Magic certainly do have Jonathan Isaac, and, and they're very, very similar players, and Jonathan Isaac's better than him at a lot of those things, um, we don't know how long Jonathan Isaac, we're going to have Jonathan Isaac. We, we, Jonathan Isaac just isn't someone, you know, you can depend on because of his health issues. And again, that could, that goes away with one healthy Jonathan Isaac season. Let's be, let's be real about it. Uh, but the Magic, the Magic need a rim protecting big next to their centers right now, as they're currently constructed. And so Hendricks, to me, fits a lot of the boxes. Now, do I think Taylor Hendricks will be an all-star? No. I don't think he has that potential. His He's just not, not shifty enough offensively. He had a lot of games and a lot of big games where he got kind of bottled up. So I don't think he's your primary option. I kind of see him in the, in the Trey Lyles role for – for Sacramento last year, that that kind of player, the Kyle Anderson role for Memphis, where he is just a high-level role player. Now, that's kind of the criticism of this, is you don't use the sixth pick on a high-level role player. Um, I would always say you take your guy, it doesn't matter where you pick him. Um, if your guy, just because your guy is projected to be eight or nine or ten, doesn't mean you should be, you know, be, you know, kind of be beholden to that. Go get your guy. If this is their guy, if they don't trust Cam Whitmore and they're stuck at six and they can't move down, take Taylor Hendricks. It's it's it, it, it's that simple. And it wouldn't be a bad pick. It would be a safe pick. Um, and, and safe isn't necessarily bad here because the Magic are trying to make the playoffs. The Magic do need contributions from these players. So to me, Hendricks is a fairly safe pick. A guy, this Magic team can rely on and can trust to add something to the group, but also be a factor outside of it, but also be a factor and add to it in, in major, major ways. Hendricks, there's obviously that little hometown thing uh, coming from UCF. He's, he's from Fort Lauderdale originally, I believe. Um, we saw him a lot here and, and the guy the guy works the dunker spot well. He pops out the three-point line well. He has all the basic skills to be a very good NBA player. He's not elite at anything, but the total package, the versatility, the athleticism, that's what has him this high in the draft. And I think that he'd be a great fit in Orlando. I think that he'd do really, really well here. And if the Magic are out on Cam Whitmore or Osar Thompson, and, and like, look, I, I'm taking Cam Whitmore in mock drafts because I, I I do I mean I am subscribing for the moment at least to the one more bite at the apple uh, theory of fit a theory of need um, or goal or whatever whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know if I take Whitmore Whitmore over Hendricks. 
Like I, I, I'm, I want to make the playoffs, and I think the Magic need to got, get guys that will help them do that, and I, I think Hendricks does that better than Cam Whitmore. But we'll see what the Magic think in a couple weeks. When we come back, we'll sort through some other names and players on my big board, some big movers and some shakers, and, and again, just talk a little bit more about how the Magic's goals fit into all this. We'll get into that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA Finals because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500, 2500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel has great promotions every day. They're a safe and secure app, and you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. So we are in the nitty-gritty of draft prep. Um, you know, I was, I was joking with our friend Ku, Ku Khalil of Locked On Pistons. He pitched a trade um, to get the Magic up to five. Well, Maybe talk a little bit more about that on Monday's Mock Draft Monday. Mock Draft Monday is going to focus on trade opportunities um, and and where the Magic might look to move around in this draft and, and, and maybe propose a few fake trades. I don't really like proposing fake trades because I'm really bad at them, number one. Um, but number two, it, it, then people focus on the fake trade instead of like the reasoning behind things. So I, I, I usually don't like doing that. Um, but but we'll, see, we'll see what I come up with this weekend. Um, We'll get to that on Mock Draft Monday. Uh, the the place to start, though, um, is with how we sort through the big board now. now. Now that we're maybe shifting and realigning goals, um, what do we do with the board? How does that board change? If we're not solely focused on fit and need, well, then that brings a lot of other players into play. We've seen a lot of mock drafts so far have Anthony Black of go number six to Orlando. Look, Anthony Black, if the Magic are really high on Amen Thompson, Anthony Black is the, the Kirkland version of, of that. Um, and that's being unfair to Anthony Black, uh, I know. But Anthony Black is a fantastic defender, solid athlete, can get into the paint, just got to improve his finishing and has to improve his jump shot to be really effective in the NBA. Amen Thompson's a better finisher than him. That's why he's in the top. That's why he's projected in the top three or four and why Anthony Black is kind of in that next tier of guys in that six through 10 range. Um, I really like Anthony Black. His defense goes a long way. Um, we know how much the Magic love versatile defenders. They're trying to build a defensive team. Um, and, and I think he would be a really good fit in Orlando, even though the Magic are pretty loaded at guard. Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony Suture throws up in the air. So maybe the Magic do start planning a little bit for life after them, knowing that maybe they can't retain both next summer. Um, maybe the Magic do start planning for that life now. Um, I don't know. But I, I do like Anthony Black. I think that he'd be a really, really good fit uh, for the Magic as well. But obviously there's that kind of that tension again. Black's really talented. Do the Magic really need another point guard? Again, that's why Taylor Hendricks seems to slot in so perfectly. As the Magic do need some more forward depth. You know, Chumo KK is always hurt. Jonathan Isaac is always hurt. Um you know, bull bull is bull bull. Um, Taylor Hendricks would fit right in and, and be a factor for the team and, and play pretty quickly. And that's why he's really high on the Magic's board and why I think the Magic would take him at number six. You look at guys like Cason Wallace, who's really, really risen as well, um, as another, you know, another kind of point guard option. When you start thinking about talent over fit, these guys start to come into play. The only guy on my board and this is not really an, this is, you know, the only guy on my board that I just don't think fits Orlando at all is Jarris Walker. Now, Jarris Walker does have a lot of skills the Magic like. He is versatile. He plays bigger than his height. He plays solid. He's a really smart basketball player. But the lack of offensive ability, I don't think he, I, personally, I don't think he maximizes his talent in Orlando. And I don't think Orlando maximizes his talent either. And so that's like the one guy in the, that's going to go in the top 10 
that I'm just like, I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I just don't think this is the right place for him. Um, and so I, I moved Jairus Walker on my last big board down to 13. Um, I wrote there, I don't think he'll be drafted 13th. I think he'll be gone long before then. But just thinking about the Magic's needs and the, but the and, and the Magic's goals for this draft, Jairus Walker to me just doesn't fit any of them. And I have some major questions uh, about him uh, and what he can add to this team specifically, especially with the shooting struggles that they have and, and, the, and the offensive struggles that they have, as good as he can be in other areas of the game. He's not elite enough at those things for me. He's a bow outlaw type and bow outlaw types are great. I'm not spending a top 10. I don't, I, I, for this magic team, I'm not spending a top 10 pick on a bow outlaw type. Um, you know, people want to call him Draymond. I don't think he's the passer that Draymond is. Um, so I think his offense, I think he is very, very limited in a lot of ways. Um, other guys, other guys to kind of note and take a look at. Um, we talked about backup center earlier in the, earlier in the, in the, in the week. Derek Lively the second is going to get a real look um, at number eleven. Now, personally, I think the Magic should chase after. I think the Magic should go after a veteran big man um, for that backup center spot. Um, I think that the Magic, um, I think that the Magic should 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 like value a veteran there to to help Wendell Carter out. But Derek Lively had a really rough year or two, no doubt about. It. Numbers aren't great. Had to play next to Kyle Filipowski, kind of took him out of his comfort zone a little bit. He's shown in workouts that he has shooting potential, which in, dramatically increases his 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 odds um, and and his desirability. He is a good rebounder. His rebounding numbers were pretty solid for the few minutes he played. He averaged like five, four or five rebounds per game in twenty minutes per game, and a little bit more than twenty minutes per game. Um, so he didn't play like he was a starter at Duke. The guy is really really talented, um, and so he's he's definitely on the radar. I would not shut down Derek Lively at 11. The other big riser is Bilal Koulibaly. Bilal Koulibaly is a teammate of Victor Wembanyama for Mets 92. So if you're watching any of the Mets 92 games on, on, NBA, on the NBA, NBA app, um, watch Bilal Koulibaly because that's the guy the Magic would really look at at 11. Really athletic, got good length for his size. He's a wing, can really get after guys defensively, he has been, you know, everyone on that Nets team is saying Bilal's growth this year has been a big reason why they are in the finals. Bilal Koulibaly, really, really raw at the beginning of the year. Just really, really raw. Just, just not really able to do a whole lot. But now he is making plays defensively. He's making plays offensively. He's shooting a little bit. There's a lot to like about Bilal Koulibaly. He's obviously still got a long way to go in his development. But you're drafting, you're drafting for the future. And Koulibaly fits so much of what the Magic like and what the Magic do. But, you know, you're taking a little bit of a gamble and you're making a little bit of a long-term investment. Koulibaly reportedly has a promise in the top 14. I've been joking with people that, well, if, if it was from the Magic, it's not leaking because the Magic don't leak anything. However, he is very much a Magic-type player. And we'll talk about him in a little bit more detail. Um, before we get to the draft, because I, I do think the Magic might take him at 11. I, I think he is very much on the radar. That's good to do for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. If you're tuning in, him on Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the places on the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Plus, for the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to sign up for my subtext. Subtext is this great platform that allows me to interact directly with you. You can text me directly, actually, and, and, and ask me questions, and I will respond and interact with you directly. I'll kind of put some – I'm planning on putting some prompts up uh, and sending out, sending out messages to the whole group, and then you just respond back to me, and it's like you're texting me one-on-one. -on -one. It is really, really awesome, and I'm excited to do it with you guys. Uh, throughout the draft and throughout the offseason heading into next season when we'll really start to pick it up. You can check it out jo at joinsubtext.com. That's joinsubtext.com slash locked on magic. Check it out today. Um, I'll put the link out probably Sunday and, and throughout next week as we start gearing up for the home stretch before the NBA draft. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Phil Frostman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.